Hi, and welcome back to Oncology for Medical Students, and this section of videos on the molecular basis of cancer. This video will introduce the idea of the hallmarks of cancer, the properties that cancer cells need to have to make them cancerous. So in the first video, we learned that cancers arise as the result of damage to the genes of a cell. This leads to the production of proteins that function in different ways than they should. But what are the specific properties that these mutations need to give the cells in order to make them cancerous? In the year 2000, Douglas Hanahan and Robert Weinberg had a very well-known article published that tried to answer that question, reducing the vast complexity of cancer into six key properties, or hallmarks as they called them. This paper proved to be very popular as one of the most cited articles in Cell Journal. A more recent version of the hallmarks of cancer was published in 2011, with the addition of four hallmarks, making ten in total. But for now, we'll keep it simple and focus on the first six. The six hallmarks that they suggested that all cancers share in common were as follows. Self-sufficiency in growth signals. Insensitivity to anti-growth signals, tissue invasion and metastasis, limitless replicative potential, sustained angiogenesis, and avoiding apoptosis. Now, I'll briefly go over each of these hallmarks to give you a clear idea of what we mean by each of these properties. In this video, I'll cover the first two, and in the second part, the last four. The first is self-sufficiency in growth signals. As we mentioned before in the previous videos on neoplasia, cell division in the body is normally very tightly controlled to ensure that tissues in the body, which are made up of cells, grow in a coordinated fashion. Cells normally need signals from other cells to tell them when to divide. When cells break free of these controls and start dividing, even when they are not getting these signals, they begin to divide uncontrollably and neoplasms, also known as tumours, result. In normal cells, cell division is controlled by substances called growth factors. Growth factors are hormones in the form of proteins that are released by cells as a way of signalling to other cells nearby that it's okay for them to divide. As we've mentioned in the previous videos on neoplasia, this kind of signalling between cells in a multicellular organism is vital. They all need to be working together for the good of the organism as a whole and not just dividing whenever they want. The way that growth factor proteins function is by binding to growth factor receptors, which are also proteins that sit in the cell's membrane. As we've mentioned before, the code for building proteins like the growth factor receptor is in the cell's DNA, in sequences of DNA called genes. The cell uses this code to build the receptor, which is then put in the cell's membrane. When the growth factor hormone binds to the growth factor receptor, this activates the receptor and leads to a cascade of signals within the cell, which ends up in the cell dividing. This so-called cascade is actually just a series of interactions between a number of different proteins in the cell. So all the parts of this cascade of signals are proteins. And as we keep saying, proteins are built by a cell from a recipe, which is in the form of genes, stretches of DNA in the cell's nucleus. What happens in cells that are cancerous is that genes, the recipe that code for these proteins, get damaged and they start producing a faulty receptor. The damage that occurs to these genes in cancerous cells, however, is quite specific. The mutation changes the DNA, so it now produces a recipe for a similar receptor, but one that can activate itself without the need for a growth hormone. This activates the intracellular cascade and causes the cell to divide when it shouldn't be. And of course the cell with the faulty gene now passes on its DNA to its daughter cells. And these start producing the mutated receptor. And they, in turn, carry on dividing even though they're not being told to. This results in uncontrolled growth. Whilst in this example, we're talking about a faulty receptor, it's important to realise that a similar mutation to any protein in the cascade that causes it to be active without the signal from the previous protein will have the same effect. 
Now that we've found out about self-sufficiency and growth signals, let's look at the next hallmark, insensitivity to inhibitory growth signals or anti-growth signals. Basically, this means that cancerous cells ignore the signals that usually prevent them from dividing when they shouldn't be. This is a slightly more complicated uh, concept, and to understand this, we need to look at something called the cell cycle. In normal tissues, cells tend to be doing one of three things, resting, dividing, or dying. And if you think about it, tissues, which are collections of cells, need to maintain their size by matching the rate at which cells are dying with those that are dividing. Tissues regulate this process by controlling how many cells enter something called the cell cycle. The cell cycle is a process a cell needs to go through in order to divide. The different stages represent what is going on inside the cell. These stages include firstly a growth stage, G1, a DNA replication stage, S stage, a second growth stage, G2, and then mitosis, which is the main form of cell division. If you don't know much about the cell cycle, I'd recommend you have a quick look at some of the videos out there on YouTube. I'll find some links, as it will really help your understanding of cancer cell biology and cancer treatment. Cells that are told by other cells in the tissue to divide are able to start off the processes within the cell that take it through the various stages of the cell cycle and eventually divide. The rest of the cells of the tissue that aren't dividing are in the resting phase, or G0, where they simply perform their normal function and don't enter the cell cycle and divide. So you might be wondering, how is this relevant to cancer? Well, for a start, for a tumour to be growing, there must be more cells in the tissue dividing than there are that are dying. And also, cells may not be able to enter the, the resting phase. An integral part of the cell cycle is involved in making sure that cells that should not enter the cell cycle are prevented from entering the cell cycle and dividing. So a normal cell trying to enter the cell cycle and divide will come across checkpoints that regulate the, the cell cycle. The first of these is the G1 checkpoint between the G1 and S phase. The second is the G2 checkpoint between the S and G2 phase. And then the third is the M checkpoint before cell division. To be able to move to the next stage through the checkpoint, the cell must be given the right signals. The checkpoints in the cell cycle also perform another very important function. When a cell's DNA is damaged, the checkpoints ensure that a cell does not pass through and pass its DNA onto its daughter cells. But how does this happen? When a damaged cell reaches a checkpoint, there are mechanisms which detect that damage and activate proteins that halt the cell at that checkpoint. Because its function is to stop mutated cells dividing and growing into tumours, the genes that code for these proteins are known as tumour suppressor genes. I'll go into more detail in a later video and explain more about tumour suppressor genes. In cancerous cells, mutations in the proteins that detect DNA damage and stop the cell from dividing cause these mechanisms to fail. This allows cells with mutations to enter the cell cycle and pass on their DNA to their daughter cells. So in summary, we've learned that mutations in genes underlie cancer, that mutations must give these cells specific abilities. These can be summarized in the six hallmarks of cancer first two of which are self-sufficiency and growth and insensitivity to anti-growth signals. If you found this video useful, please click the like button below and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thank you.